Uh, from Mayor Lorraine Inouye, who is the former mayor, former county council member, and state uh, current state senator, and uh, former member of the Planning Commission. I think I got uh, all those credits correct, I hope. <laughs> you sure did. Okay, Lorraine, thank you for joining us uh, this evening, and Todd Belt and I will uh, be asking you some questions about this particular campaign and your stands on the issues. First of all, uh, why do you want to become mayor again? Good. You know what? Every table asks me. Time to stop. Okay. I guess I have, what, same time? 15? Same time. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. Good. Um, actually, it was the people that decided they want to see Lorraine Rodero Inouye come back to the county and be mayor again. Uh, last year, um, you know, I've had calls because they knew there was going to be an election. Uh, I've had many encouragement to come back and be mayor again. They en enjoyed my two years of service uh, previously. Uh, and I dwelt on it at least for six months last year. I talked to the family, um, and we decided, well, um, let me really assess the situation. I was very thankful, and I thank those in my district for allowing me to be senator for 10 years because I've learned a lot, um, nine and whatever months left. Um, and so, uh, but there is a difference between legislative as well as being mayor, um, being an administrator for, for a high office on the county. Um, and so, you know, as an example, you build a road, you put a traffic light, you build a gym, you know, you see it, you're at the legislature, you create laws, and you know what, whether it's good or not to some people, you don't see it, and nobody remembers what you did, but except for my bottle bill, I'm reminding people that that was, you know, my that was my measure. However, um, uh, and and I think you know, ten years um, is to me. I think I've given my time, uh, and would certainly I, I enjoyed being uh, and the experience I've gained from it. So I've decided, you know what? I know the legislative process. I want to share that with the people. I decided I'm going to come back and be mayor again. And there are things that I did. 16 years ago that will probably, if elected, I'm going to inherit again because I started the Integrated Waste Management Plan in 1991 when we were mandated to do. I didn't get re-elected uh, in 92, and so um, landfill issue is history. So perhaps I'll be back there building a landfill after all or something of the waste to energy, however, just getting rid of the trash. You know, things do tend to come circle, and that's got to be about the fastest 10 years I can ever remember, too. <laughs> Todd, next question is yours. Sure. You've obviously had ex uh, experience in the executive branch here on the Big Island and the legislature and the state. Where do you see opportunities that we might be missing in terms of collaborating with state government on the county level? Um, collaboration, uh, for me, with the experience I've had, is going to be very, very important and the key. Um, you know, and no, say, having said that, uh, and having my experience, you know, I'm going to be the kind of mayor that will be down at the legislature, whether it's the federal um, or uh, Congress uh, or federal government or the state government in allowing me to go in and, and ask for assistance and the collaboration because I already know the process, um, you know, and I can do the research ourselves. Um, and I'm going to actually uh, create a, um, under the mayor's office, um, I've tried it with um, with an intern program that I've had with the university uh, at Manoa and uh, the university at HBU and Chaminade and, and our university at Hilo in an internship program. And what I'm going to do as well with a collaboration with the legislature, I'm planning on creating an internship program, but also to create a program where I'm going to be teaching the interns on the legislative process. And so, having said that, I'm the, on the collaboration side, I will be the mentor, you know, for this program that we'll be doing the collab collaboration. And I would want the internship program and probably also assist them in, the, in a stipend. Um, but I'm not sure if I can arrange that. Uh, no, I can arrange a stipend, but whether, you know, um, a, because I, I really feel that having interns um, is going to, I don't want to create more jobs because I have to talk to you about the budget because things we need to slash. But internship program is going to be very valuable 
we can, we, you know, it gains them, the, gives them the experience in government. It gives them something to do, like the legislative process, and as well as um, teaching our young uh, leaders of the future about government service. So the collaboration is going to be twofold. I added too much, but professor, that's <laughs> my short answer. No problem. Now you did mention the budget and we're looking currently at uh, about a $400 million budget, yes. uh, give or take a few million. And uh, is, is, is that too big? Do, do we need to pare that down? Does it need to be it, smaller? It will have to. Let me share with you. Um, as I shared with the other five tables, um, I got bad news yesterday. Um, the Senate majority was called to a meeting with the governor's budget director, uh, our budget director, the state, uh, and was uh, presented with a forecast uh, of the next uh, session uh, and the income that's uh, coming into the state coffers. It is not good. Um, and so we're bracing and, and they're telling us that we need to work together collaboratively because we have to brace ourselves for some very economic times next year for the next budget cycle. Um, and knowing that tourism is down, we're, we're gonna see a decline with our TAT income from the, from the TAT taxes to the county. You know, um, annually the county of Hawaii receives about $20 million um, in income from the TAT. We're going to see a decline in that. So, you know, we're going to be facing the same situation and what the legislature is going to be doing with the state budget. So, you know, and I believe with my experiences, um, you know, it's going to be really helpful. Let me share something with you I shared with the others. The first 100 days of the new mayor, let me share with you. Come November, the new mayor is elected. Come January, no, in December, the first Monday, I think, is when the new administration takes over, okay? In the short period of time, come up with your administration, your directors. Come January, the third week in January is when the legislature opens. The day after is when the, all the mayors present their wish list or their budget to the legislature. Think about the time period, okay? During that time as well, mayor comes back working on the new budget to present to the council in March. Okay, that would be a temporary, I mean, a tentative budget for that matter. Uh, and then work with the council on the, on the budget for the 09 period. So it's going to be a very, very telling year for the county. Uh, and that's why I believe my candidacy as being, or having been there as mayor, will be able to get in and do the job. Um, so it's going to be tough, but uh, we're going to have to, you know, and $403 million um, is a very, very high budget. Um, however, we have to understand, though, when I left, we had 20, 2,000. I increased the, the employees in two years by 25 is because I initiated the 911 system. So we hired police officers and I created the, you know, the, um, the 911 system personnel. Uh, and so, uh, but, you know, having 2,500 employees is pretty steep in the 16 years um, of, uh, of that much of a growth compared to the budget. So you know that things are gonna be, uh, we're not gonna have a $403 million budget in 09, that's for sure. Yeah. Any thoughts about uh, what some of the things are that can be done? I and mean, I realize that it's all subject to when okay. you actually get I, into the details of the budget, but... Uh, on the economic side, I think I, I, I in, did in mention... In terms of uh, reducing it, are uh, we talking about uh, an immediate hiring Cutbacks. freeze? Sure. Um, not replacing uh, employees That's gonna who happen. Uh, retire? That's going to happen. Hiring freeze, uh, releasing of your temporary positions. There's about 200, I understand, temporary positions. There's maybe another 200 uh, part-timers. Uh, that has to be a re uh, assessed as well. Um, of course, you know, some of the temporaries, they don't have all the, you know, the benefits, but, you know, that has to, to, to be looked at as well. Um, your I'm not going to cut back police and fire, though, because I already talked about public health and safety. We're going to increase, actually, some, you know, the, the fire departments, um, they are going to be from some fire stations that are going to be built, uh, as well as police stations. So I'm, that not, you know, at the time when it, the economy is down, is, is not when you cut back your essentials, you know, like police and fire. Mm -hmm. Hey, thank you very much. You mentioned the uh, decline in tax revenues as a result of the, um, loss in hospitality services and things mm -hmm. like that that we're going to have. That also means we're going to be losing some jobs as well. Yes. What areas of the economy would you like to target in order to help people who may be put out of work? 
Yes. Well, um, and I kind of mentioned some of the things, um, and I'll continue to say that. Um, we need to continue to provide the government services jobs that have been either in the state, and I'd like to work with the state to, to continue to proceed with those projects that already have been approved and budgeted, such as bond floating, for such items as continuation of road improvements, um, and, and no different than the county. I'll continue to do road improvements with the state. Um, uh, I see things differently though. Um, for me, I think um, farming out roads that's county um, owned, I would prefer farming it out to contracts and have the private sector do that. Uh, and that creates the jobs for those that already are in business. Um, we can do potholes, we can do minor repairs on our roads, but in, in several things it does. It gets the jobs, uh, it gets the work done fast. One more minute. You know, faster in a short period of time. Uh, and you're providing jobs. I'd like to continue to see that uh, we proceed with other projects, uh, like the West Hawaii Civic Center as an example, to make sure that that is built um, and continue to look at all other projects that, the pre that this current administration has already been approved. You know, whether it's building a, you know, a um, parks uh, building or, or whatever, but those are the things that we need to continue. However, that doesn't con um, uh, mean that we, we, we uh, disregard other areas like continuing to lobby, which I will, um, improvements and income that comes to the university campus, uh, you know, in particular because that's, you know, we've already approved many projects that haven't been built yet at the campus money you know like the S&T building uh, continuation of the making sure that the ag building gets you know completed uh, the ag and Beaumont research um, and so Time those are the kinds up. of things that you know we need to uh, continue to move so that our economic viability is um, at least moving along Hey, great. So Senator Lorraine Inouye, thank you very much for uh, dropping by the media table okay. this evening. Thank you.